It's kind of like siliconing a sink. <laughs> What's happened? Oh, I started the question. What, is, what am I doing? Oh, I have, however, just had an idea. Hey everyone, it's Barry here. We're gonna have a bit of fun today. Uh, last year, I was sent a link to this article here on the screen right now. Um, I'll try and list it in the description, but it's basically about an invention, a product that was gonna be on the shelves in a supermarket that I still haven't seen. So I did take it with a pinch of salt, very on brand, it, from the Daily Star. Chips shaped like a spoon that were designed to get the perfect amount of sauce per fry. Heinz have come up with a revolutionary new idea as 84% of sauce fans are left feeling they never get an ideal dollop of their favorite condiment per chip. It concocted Heinz Spoon Fries, spelled F-R-I-E-Z, as 84% of sauce fans are left feeling they never get an ideal dollop of their favorite condiment per chip. A global study commissioned by Heinz showed that nine in 10 people refused to eat chips. I refuse to eat these chips. Without a sauce, with four and a half billion French fries gobbled each year. Four and a half billion? That's a lot of potatoes. The fried potatoes come in many different shapes and sizes, but due to the French fried classic long thin style, the amount of sauce scooped is minimal due to its slender frame and limited surface area. Well, that's certainly something I'm not described as having. Made out of potato. Oh, I've got an ad. Brilliant. Made out of potato and resembling the same shape of a traditional spoon, the potato bowl head will uh, frinally, frinally, yes, let sauce superfans enjoy the perfect amount of Heinz ketchup. That is what we're attempting. But luckily, as I rummaged through my silicon box in the garage, here's a replica of that. Oh, look at all this silicon. I, of course, uh, have this in my house. Spuds. Okay, so I have peeled the potato. This is a big old one. I'm just going to cut it into three chunks. I'm just going to bring it up to simmer, let it bubble away to make our mash. You know, I've just Googled it and these spoon fries, I don't think they ever actually made them. <laughs> I've got this vision of them having this in a factory. Um, the other thing to say actually is I've made quite a lot of mash there and the depth of these is quite uh, shallow. But when I turn it upside down like that, we have actually got that slight indent that a spoon needs to hold the ketchup. So this could actually work quite well. Potatoes. We are gonna mash this up now. I actually had a potato ricer, which would make this super, super smooth, but a standard masher will do the job. If I try and press that into the mold, I'm sure it'll work if I freeze it, which of course I'm going to, but I want to get it a bit smoother to fit in here. So I'm going to add in a splash of milk, dollop of butter, and I'm also going to flavour it, okay? Why not? Being the seaside loving chap that I am, these are chips are going to have salt and vinegar slightly already in them. Now, the most important thing out of all of that for me is the milk and the butter, really. Oh, wow. You can see already. That has actually almost made it like instant mashed potato when you make that stuff. It's much more sort of like fluidy. It's a slight squelch in the texture, it's smoother. So it's gonna hopefully give us a nice chance to load up the spoon mold. It's not thick and clumpy, which gives it the best chance to fit into these quite thin grooves. Actually, it might be better to do this whilst it is slightly warmed. So I'm <laughs> gonna do it quite rough. I'm gonna dollop it on. Oh my gosh, look at that. Ah, uh, it's working. That is working. That's really therapeutic. Oh, wow. Sorry, DIY thing. It's kind of like siliconing a sink. <laughs> it's the closest thing I can get to. No, no, grouting tiles. Yes. I quite like grouting tiles. Not with potato though. Although you probably wouldn't put it past me. I have got so much potato left over. This is a bit overkill, but I'm gonna take this spatula and try and run it right across like that, just to fill it in. Oh, wow. Just tidy it up so none of it sticks to it. That is really cool. I can just about fit that in our freezer. And now I've got the wonderful task of waiting in suspense for a couple of hours for them to firm up and then we can hopefully cook them. All right, it's been two hours in that time. I've uh, spent a bit of time with Chloe who will be the taste tester in just a moment. Uh, for Patreon, I just did a very quick behind the scenes of the garden kitchen. You guys, there'll be a full video walkthrough of that very soon. And most importantly, I discovered that putting vinegar in your mashed potato is phenomenal. <laughs> like, we are packaging the flavour potentially 
into these spoons. Speaking of which, oh, it was really delicate. Oh, I can feel the warmth of my finger melting it almost immediately. Look at that. Oh, I don't even want to put it back in because I might snap it. It's getting so warm already. Oh, wow. <laughs> We've got that indent as well. What is going to happen as we cook that? Speaking of which, we are going to fry them. We're going to air fry them and oven them. I don't think the air fryer or the oven is going to work. I think it's not going to have enough heat. That's why I'm going to keep them cold to give it the best chance. Whereas with the heat in a fryer, that's going to give it its best chance. So I'll get it all ready, get this back in the freezer and maybe make a couple more. You might have chip spoons. What are chip spoons? You're about to find out. You should be excited. I am now. <laughs> <laughs> My oven is ready. This has just come from the freezer. I'm only doing one, but I have put another batch on that might set in time. I hope that proves me wrong. 200C, 180C fan, I think it's gonna mush. But then again, you buy frozen chips like that. I just can't remember if they're actually sort of like flash fried first of all to sort of hold it all the mash together. So, I guess I'll let you know. Air fryer now. <laughs> I only wanna do one. Well, that's nice and hot, the same temperature as the fryer, which I think will work. I gotta say though, the oven one is holding together really well, like awesomely. All right, so here is the air fryer one. You see that there? It's a little bit wonky. Um, have we got that indent still? Oh, that's the top of it. Look, <laughs> it's like leaning to one side. Looks like the cutlery we used to have at school. Um, but there we go. It's, it's, it's not a bad thing. I worry about that neck. But actually, as it cools down, it might get stronger. So we'll put that there. And this is the one from the oven. 20 minutes in there, like I'd normally cook oven chips. I rotated it halfway through and that's blooming hot, ouch. But you can see that has actually stayed intact. But the heat couldn't get into the actual head of the spoon where it dips down. But by turning it upside down, when it was baking, it was the underside that was getting all the heat. So that luckily has given it a little bit of color there because before I turned it, it had nothing there. So compared to the air fryer version, it's a little bit lighter, but they've both held their shape. This one wonky neck because it probably got blown around like Mary Poppins umbrella style, but it's the fryer that I think is gonna give it the best color. <laughs> What's happened? Oh my gosh. It's all disintegrated into my oil. I need to get that out. Yep, all of that is burning away like crazy. That's what's left. We're gonna try it again, I've got a theory. So my theory is um, we're gonna to have to go thrice cooked chips on this. So I did this years ago in the past where you basically boil the chips, first of all, you boil the potatoes so they're not mashed, they're whole potatoes. You chill it, you then fry it very quickly to create a layer, a seal, bah, uh, around the outside of the potato. You then chill that to lock it in keeps the middle fluffy and then fry that at a warmer temperature to get that golden color. So I've let this oil cool down a little bit. We're gonna put it on the lowest heat setting it does. Flash fry it for a little bit, chill it, and then fry it at that warmer temperature. Um, we've got four <laughs> spoons that we can try and use. The other two snapped. And I'm kind of quite happy with the air fryer one right now. <laughs> All right, here we go. I've got one spoon in here. Let's just lower it in at this lower heat. I might have just been too hot. Okay, it's not too bad. Not falling apart just yet. It still is losing shape. But the mo what I'm trying to see is if it's got some sort of skin on it. This might take quite a while. <laughs> oh no. Look. No. Oh no. I have, however, just had an idea. As I look over at the air fryer one and the oven one 
This oven one held its shape really well. It locked it in. So sorry about this, Mr. Oven Spoon. I'm gonna see if we can get a bit more color on there. So then I'll bake this to the point where it doesn't even color like that, but we've actually got that skin on there. I probably don't need to, but then I will chill it thrice cook styly, and that could be the perfect combo. Yeah, that is actually working. Oh, that is getting a, a really nice color on there. Look at that. It's not perfect because it's already been baked and discolored a little bit, but that is the theory to the oven Batman. They've only got two left out of my batch. I really don't want to be waiting for <laughs> start the question. What, is, what am I doing? Beautiful. So it is just starting to color and a little bit ooh, like thrice cooked chips. There is a skin formed, so I'm going to let this cool down and chill it just to be safe. This one is going to snap at any moment. <laughs> oh. So no colour on them at all. I'm hoping it holds that mashed potato in. Oh yeah. They would have 100% escaped by now. Yes! Come on! It's going to be worth it. Look at that colour. We've done it, folks. Look! Look at that! Annoyingly, I've only got two. I've got a hungry daughter. <laughs> so I'll have one, and she can have one too. <laughs> what a strange day! So here we go. This is the whole point of it. <laughs> the actual recess in the spoon has gone a bit. Let me just compare that. See on that photo there, look, that's perfect. Whereas mine has just kind of dumped it in and you couldn't really get that scoop because you're going to hit that bottom side anyway. However, if I wanted to be over the top massively, <laughs> well, I don't know what you mean, Barry. Syringe that we do medicine with for the kids, which also helps to make a fried egg, a mini fried egg. We've been there before. I can probably syringe the perfect amount onto the spoon, defeating the point of the spoon a little bit. And actually that is sitting in there in a really nice way. Look at that. Right. Chloe, mm -hmm. one chip. Oh, there you go. That's, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Ready? Oh, you've got that triple cooked texture actually. You've got the fluffiness in the middle. You've got that layer that we baked on, then the crunch. And you can taste like ketchup. Yes. Have you ate it all already? I have because it's pathetically tiny, like spoon size. It's got a gorgeous crunch on it though, uh, and, and that's, that's it. Sorry, your lunch is about three hours late. There is more lunch to come. Speaking of which, uh, that's not the only silicon mold I've got. Check this out. This mold uh, of oranges, uh, as you can see, it should have indents on it and stuff, turned out like that. Kind of like a posh potato wedge. Very symmetrical one. Got a sugar mice mold, uh, so if anyone wants a potato mouse, this is exactly what I would do if I had a chip shop. For the Back to the Future fan, um, <laughs> It's actually, if it's got a deeper model, look at the number plate, that's actually pretty good. One for the uh, Lego fans, one for the uh, gaming fans. <laughs> this is my Star Wars Death Star mold that I've used before. I made the salted caramel Ferrero Rocher in there and done a few other bits with it. I tried to make something with it uh, and <laughs> it's got some of the lines on there, but as it baked, it flattened. Uh, it, it kind of looks more like a peach, but I think these are my favorites. But I actually quite like the simplicity. Mmm! <laughs> the chips are amazing. 